tonight coming to you live from nigeria it's moments we talk about the rising menace called pedophilia the constant abuse of minors by much older persons our guest today on the show is omolara adetukasi a doctor and public health personnel for that particular child that i was talking about i think it was the landlord that was actually abusing the child and poverty has a role to play in all yeah, this yeah. and so because they didn't want to get evicted they didn't want problems with the landlord so they were kind of like using the child to pay rent so we have extreme really? cases that is just unbelievable we also take to the streets to find out how much nigerians know of this debasing act i don't have idea of pedophilia so i, I definitely can't know a pedophile a pedophile is a man who is a sexually active man an adult who is sexually attracted to children. Get in here. The conversation starts now. Today on the show, we're talking about pedophilia in Nigeria. And our guest is Omalara Aditukasi. She's a doctor and public health personnel. And she also runs an NGO. Welcome, Welcome to, to the show. show. Thank you very it's much. Good to have you. Thank you. And, you know, we've been talking in depth about pedophilia. Okay. And we just want to talk a little bit about your experience, you know, being a doctor okay. and also being a public um, health practitioner. So what's been your experience and what kind of stories have you heard about pedophilia? The truth mm. is that you don't have to be a doctor in Nigeria to hear about pedophiles. It's mm. all over the news. You pick the newspaper every day and you hear about the six-year-old that was raped, the four-year-old that was raped. So mm. it's everywhere. But of course in my practice I've seen patients that have been brought, talking about children now, mm. that have been brought to um, the hospital because they were molested mm. at one point in time or the other and we have had to treat them and then i also run an ngo that actually deals with children so i've been to schools mm -hmm. and we've had conversations in that regard let's talk yeah. about the patients now usually do you find that the parent comes or the family member the aunts the uncle would they come and say i think my child has been molested or would they say there's something wrong no it depends and that's the truth mm -hmm. you know that we actually live in a society that does not encourage speaking out mm -hmm. so you find out that a lot of people are actually secretive so at times the parent just comes and says, I helped that that's, okay, let me give a particular example. Okay, there was a time that um, a patient was brought to a hospital. This wasn't my personal experience, but a friend of mine experienced it. A patient was brought to a hospital and the parents was just like, please help me treat this girl's infection. They actually knew that the girl was being abused, okay. but they just brought the girl to be treated for infections. They didn't bring the girl for us to you know, bring about evidence that could be used in court or that could be used in the police station because they knew the person that was abusing the child. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about a child that was about five or six. So, do you understand? So they just old. Yes. So they just brought the child to be treated. Do you understand? And but did they say to you, I mean, as a doctor, yes. when someone brings someone to you to be treated, there's a medical history. You of course. certain questions. Of course. So did they even say to you what had happened or did you just say treat the person? Oh, you know that in our environment, okay, like for that particular child that I was talking about, I think it was the landlord that was actually abusing the child. And poverty has a role to play in all yeah, this. Yeah. And so because they didn't want to get evicted, they didn't want problems with the landlord, so they were kind of like using the child to pay rent. So we have extreme really? cases. That is just unbelievable. Yeah, we have extreme they cases like with that. with the child. We have extreme cases wow. like that. But we also have cases where the parents are genuinely concerned. Like, okay, I've seen cases where the child is having, is complaining, my mom is itching or my mom is pinning me down there. And the mother brings for you to confirm that the hymen mm. is still intact. Mm. Do you understand? So we have varying cases that come, that present at every point in time. And of course, you have to ask. You know, you have to ask, has the child been complaining? Has the child been abused? Is the child withdrawn? Is the child, have there been any psychological change that you've noticed? Are there things that you've noticed that points to this direction? Mm. Mm. Let me ask you this, because, um, you know, the topic today is pedophilia in yes. Nigeria. Yes. And we cannot talk about pedophilia without talking about abuse, which we're focused on right now. Yes. Now, in your medical history and your years of doing what you do, yes. have you come across a pedophile? Okay. I can say I've come across somebody that has... I'm not a psychiatrist. Okay. Because let me first of all start that by saying that pedophilia, pedophilia itself is a psychiatric problem mm. so it's like a sexual orientation the person yeah. just finds himself attracted to children usually children younger than 13 years old mm. you understand so i nobody has come to me in particular to Confess, to talk yeah. about it it's a, it's a disease of stigma right so let me ask you this you know even as a mother for instance you know at what age do you stop male uh, presence when your daughter is changing mm. or oh. what are you comfortable with when a father is playing with okay. his daughter because the man you married 
it's on the road you met each other and fell in love. You do not know the person from childbirth. That's you know? very true. So you have to like look out for pointers. And what are those things that you can look out for as a mother? Where is the danger zone where my child is not allowed to sit down on my husband's lap at a certain okay. age? All right. Thank you very much for that question. Actually, when an NGO, one of the things that we do is that we go about, you know, talking to parents about things like that, usually in schools. So when they have PTEs, we have forums where we talk about things like this. And one of the things that we say is this. The moment your child begins to speak, it should start a form of sex education. Okay. The thing is this, I have three daughters and myself and my husband are actually very involved in their upbringing. We're pastors. One of the things that we do is that we say the same things to these girls. One is seven, one is five, one is a baby. Mm -hmm. But the one that is seven and the one that is five, they know that no man is allowed to carry them. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a taboo. Mm -hmm. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to sit on anybody's laps. Those are, those are boundaries that you place for your child. Yeah. You know, they know that nobody's allowed to see them naked. You know, so they're not allowed to wear pants on the pallet because anybody can just walk in and nobody's allowed to see them that way. So if they hear the door sound, they run inside and get properly dressed. You know, those are things that you just, those are boundaries that you place in the child. Why? You're trying to equip the child for the society that we have at the moment. Yeah. The world is not as friendly as it used it's to not, be. It's Do you not. understand? Your neighbor might be anything. For goodness sake, it's not written on the forehead. Yeah. And usually most of these children are abused, are abused by people that they know. Yeah. They're abused by their teachers. They're their uncle, people that are within their close circle, Sunday school teachers, anybody, imam, it could be anybody. Mm. So you need to give your child some, some training that helps the child at every point Definitely. in time. We're going to continue this conversation. I want to talk about strategies in which parents can educate their children about, you know, okay. their own sexual health. Coming up shortly, the conversation continues. You're watching Moments Nigeria. The topic today is paedophilia in Nigeria. So, you know, before the break, we were talking okay. about possible strategies, Bolani, you were saying, that, mm -hmm. you know, parents can use to just ensure that, you know, their kids are safe mm -hmm. and not, you know, not likely to fall prey to, to paedophilia. And as you said, you mentioned places that you might not be with your children all mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. So how do you identify someone who is a pedophile. So let's shed some light into the act so that people who are at home, if you have those tendencies, if you are a pedophile and you're watching this show, just be hitting you wherever you are. There are already laws in place. In Nigeria, it's life imprisonment mm. if you rape a minor. Do you understand? But are those laws really implemented? But we know that in our country, well, they are, there is a problem of implementation mm. with some policies, but I don't have the statistics as to whether it is implemented or not, but I know that the law is in place. So of course we all have the role to play. The police, the lawyers, the judges, everybody has the role to play to ensure that this, this thing that has been put into law is actually implemented, yeah. you understand, so that we can, so that people can actually have the fear of it. Now, talking about pedophilia in itself, it is, you know, I said it's a sexual orientation. It's different from child molestation. It is until you act out on this sexual orientation that is actually the problem. So when you say sexual it? orientation, I don't mean to cut you short, but yes. what comes to my mind is your pref I mean, preference, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Somebody is gay, somebody is straight, somebody is okay. homosexual, and then someone is a pedophile. Well, for homosexuality in some countries, you know, it's socially acceptable. <laughs> Do you understand? But I don't know any country that has passed it into law that it is okay. Do you understand? For now, right now, what it is called, I don't know where the trend of the world is going to, but what it is called is that it's a psychiatric disorder. It is something that can actually be treated. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I don't know if the person can be converted to a non-pedophile, mm -hmm. but the person can be taught things to do, therapy can be given to prevent the person from acting out okay. on the feeling. Do you understand? Mm. The fact that you feel like sleeping with a goat doesn't mean you should go ahead and sleep with a yeah. goat. Yeah, go and do it. Do I mean, you know what, you know, when you're talking, I was just thinking of in the UK, they have the sex offenders register where if you've been convicted as a sex offender, yes. you know, you actually get listed on that register. So if you're moving into an area where there's schools mm. nearby, Children, you know, you know everybody will be alerted that, oh, this person is in this area. Everyone needs to be careful. Exactly. Kids need to be, be more exactly. vigilant. So do you think if we had a similar register here in Nigeria, it would really help with keeping, keeping kids yeah, safe? Yeah, of course it will help. I think the problem we have in Nigeria is a problem of education. In the UK, like you just rightly put, a lot of people are educated about it. They know who the sex offender is. They know how to keep their children safe. Mm. So the, we don't have that yet in Nigeria. Mm. And if we can implement something like that, of course, it would be wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Let's go back to um, Tucker's question about identifying whether okay. or not someone is a pedophile. Okay. Well, looking at things that you can be aware of to recognize a pedophile, the truth is that there is really no 
it's not written on the forehead, mm. but you need to be sensitive. Like, for instance, if someone is always, always around my kid, saying, calling my kid pet names, my wife, my baby, mm. come and sit near me. My senses, my intuition comes into play. Mm -hmm. And I become suspicious and I start putting boundaries mm. instantly. Do you understand? So you find out that they are actually children lovers. Do you understand? They are people that want to be around the kids at every point in time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I think those are one of the ways in which you can identify them. Do you understand? Mm. But I cannot say, I cannot, the fact that somebody loves children does not mean that you should label the person a pedophile. Mm. So instead, I think I'll answer your question the other way. Mm. I think what we should be talking about is how we can educate our kids, how we can put boundaries mm. so that they know when to shout. They know when to run. Maybe when, it, when somebody tells you, come to this corner, you know that you're meant to run or you're mm. meant to shout for help. If someone says, remove your pants. Like my kids, I tell them, in our family, we don't keep secrets. Mm. So there's nobody that can tell you, let this stay within the walls of this room. Mm. No secrets are kept. Mm. Everything should be told to mommy. Everything should be told to daddy. You should speak up at every point in time. What help is there for, for the young people who have been the victims of pedophilia? For people who have been the victims of pedophilia, I think that aside from my part, you know, it's like it's multidisciplinary. The treatment of a child that has gone through that is multidisciplinary. If you take the child to the pediatrician, what they do is that they treat the physical symptoms of it. But there's also the psychological symptom that has to be treated. So the treatment is multifaceted. You want to ensure that you counsel the child so that that experience does not become a determinant mm. of the rest they feel of it, some the kids feel it's their fault don't they they feel exactly. like they and even for the boy child sometimes you hear that the, the abuser or the, the abuse becomes an abuser as well. yes mm -hmm. in some yes. cases you hear that they grow yes. up to also yes. become yes. exactly yeah. that yes mm -hmm. so i think that counseling has a lot of role to play in that that child probably also needs to see, well, should I call it a, a psychologist? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and have some form of counseling and some form of therapy. You understand? The child has to be told over and over again that it's not your fault. Mm. And the child has to be counseled. If there are other traits, maybe if there are other things that it, the counselor sees that needs to be addressed, so those issues have to be addressed so that it does not determine how the child's life you know, mm. becomes at the end of yeah, the day. I'm so happy that you mentioned that because I think often in our society, you know, you're told, oh, just pray for the child. Once yeah. we pray for the child, it's forgotten, and it's over, it's in the past. No, but really, no, the child no, needs it's beyond ongoing that. support. It's beyond that. That. Yeah. Amalara, I would like us to actually talk about that, about the role that religion often plays mm -hmm. in, you know, the healing process and also the idea that people can solely depend on religion because you're a pastor and you're a doctor. So yes. we're going to be able to get a dual side to this. Coming up shortly, the conversation continues. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Today on the show, we have been talking about pedophilia in Nigeria. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, the role that you know, religion has played. I'm not going to downplay the, the place of prayer. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because it's, it's my value. It's my mm -hmm. core belief. But I'm enlightened. I'm educated. I'm not an illiterate. Do you understand? And so I know that when I'm supposed to act, God expects me to act. Mm -hmm. When I'm supposed to give sound counsel, God expects me to give sound counsel. When I'm supposed to involve the law in a matter. God expects me to do that. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So if it is the police that is meant to handle a case, it is not the place of any pastor. And I'm not just going to hack on pastors, imams, religious mm. bodies, whatever, Buddhists. It's not the place of any of them to try and cover the matter. Mm. Do you understand? So I think we all have a role to play. Religion has a role to play. Mm. Sex education should even be taught in the church. Mm. It should be one of the things that we teach our children in children's church because they're coming there for education. Mm. So you should teach them about it. And if, the, if a child comes to you and reports, like you mentioned earlier a case, what if it's a father that is molesting the child? If the child comes to you, you are, you are in a position to help. And when that help is demanded of you, I expect that you should give it. Yeah, thank you. This has been such yeah. a... Thank and I like so the way it ended. The fact that you know, we had someone who is of both, you know, both sides of the coin, mm. and she's saying it. As a religious leader, there's nothing against prayer, but also know that this is a medical condition. The person has tendencies mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sleep with young children. And they even come to that church or that mosque every Friday. And their children are passing yeah. around. Mm -hmm. You know, know when to act. So thank you so much yeah. for that. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. for, been for coming. Really well, coming up on the show, it's time for In A Nutshell. You're watching Moments Nigeria and you know you guys in a nutshell our topic today pedophilia in Nigeria I feel like I've learned that it's something that is 
very rampant and we need to educate our kids in order to protect them you know mm. and you know as our guest was saying let them know people shouldn't not sitting on laps not you know making them aware of their private parts just so they can communicate you know if there's even the slightest risk that it could happen to mm. them mm. Okay. i definitely agree i think for me what i lean towards more because we've had cases of rape and abuse and we've said all of that for me it's just letting people at home know that it is a medical condition. No, the urge to see that three-year-old girl naked is not normal. I think, you know, it goes back to accountability that, you know, it's, if a pastor or, you know, a religious leader of whatever religion you are, if you try to cover up mm. for this person that has abused someone, in so many ways you're accountable mm. for anyone else that he might abuse or she might abuse in the future. And we hope that people will understand that. now time for our question of the day so interesting question what do you guys think should be done when a pedophile is caught to be honest if i was a judge and it, the onus wasn't me i'd probably sentence them to death yeah yeah what about and you? i think for me i've spoken about it before i probably um chemical castration something i really believe and i think it, it is a disease so if you you know apply medicine to it to give mm. them the drugs that mean that you know the private parts aren't in functioning order, therefore they may have the urge, but there's no way to really act on it. But yeah. if you know that it's in the mind, they can carry out that same thing without penetrating. Yeah, but there's drugs you can give them for the mind as well. I, um, I think what I would definitely do, I would a life in prison and it needs to be like a three week case, not this dragged out one year, mm. two years mm. and no bail. <laughs> mm. yeah, all right, let's throw this question out to you, our viewers. If you had the power and the authority to dictate what would happen to a pedophile, what sentence or what would you say should be done to them if they are caught? Let us know via all of the addresses that are scrolling across the screen right now. Before we go. <laughs> that is really funny. We need to improve on our grammar. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's go back to university for that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Moments Girls Talk Nigeria. We hope that you were educated and enlightened. We try to make sure as much as possible that we bring topics that are relevant and also pertinent to our community and our society. We hope that this issue of pedophilia will be eradicated one day from our community. Thank you again. And always remember, if you, if can, you can think, think it, it you, you can, can do it. it. No, no, no.